Podcast City Network. This is Brad Chandler, and you're listening to The Brad Chandler Show. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Brad Chandler Show. Uh, today is actually a bit different. You're used to seeing me uh, create my live content on the weekends, but today I am doing it on a weekday, on a Monday, my time. And my guest today is Liam of the Van Idol Ruin. And he is from Australia, so it's actually Tuesday morning. So I got to ask, man, how's, uh, what's the future like? <laughs> G'day, mate. Yeah, uh, no hoverboards or flying cars yet, but uh, <laughs> uh, give it time. Yeah, we'll, we will. So, hey, man, uh, it's such a pleasure to have you come on uh, with it being so early your time. Um, thank you so much. And uh, I came across your band. Uh, as you already know, through Bandcamp, I, I come across a bunch of bands uh, through Bandcamp. And we've been actually talking for, uh, I want to say, like the past like few days, maybe a week. Um, and dude, the first thing that I found interesting about you is that you're not just the drummer. Yes, you're the lead. The <laughs> yeah, you're the lead vocalist. I, I have... I, I have the utmost respect for any drummer who can drum and sing, but with the type of music that you're playing and the beats that you're playing and whatnot, to be able to keep the beat and play as fast as you do and to like sing at the at a regular pace, like your your pace and whatnot, it's just incredible. So I mean, like that was the first. It, I came across you. It wasn't through band camp. I came across you through one of the groups. Remember? <laughs> That's what it was. I was asking about um, some death metal bands, and you were like, uh, what about Black and Thresh um, death metal? And I was like, absolutely, dude. And you shot me a message, and I, I listened, and I saw that you were the vocalist and the drummer, and I was just absolutely amazed. <clears throat> how does it – when you're, when you're playing – how does it feel like uh, being the the front man, but you're actually in the back? <laughs> it's funny. We played a couple of shows on the weekend. We were talking about this. Like um, a lot of focus is on the guitarist and bass player. They can headbang all throughout the set. They don't have to break for singing. So I'm doing all the singing for them instead. So I don't know. It's a weird dynamic. Um, but uh, I kind of did it out of sheer necessity, to be honest. Um we, we can get into into all that later, but um, I like anything. Singing and drumming, it takes practice. Uh, one of um, one of Australia's uh, death metal uh, legends from the early 90s, Armored Angel, have you heard of them? Yeah. Singer-drummer as well, yeah. Uh, so uh, it's not uh, uncommon. We- all right. Oh, hold on. I I might have heard you wrong. What did you, what band? Armored Angel from. Oh, uh, I thought you said Morbid Angel. No, no. I no, was no. like, wait a minute. I didn't know they were from Australia. No, no, no. Armored Angel from no. uh, from Canberra, Australia, the nation's capital. Um, yeah, they had a drummer singer as well, and um, yeah, like it's not uncommon, man. And like anything, it just takes practice. Yeah, I, I have, like I said, I have the utmost respect for any drummer, like any musician who can actually play their instrument and sing. But when it comes to playing drums, man, it's just a whole new dynamic. And, you know, I've always been, I, I had a friend of mine who was a drummer vocalist too. And I always wonder how that was like, like, it's got to be weird for the fans to like look up and be like, where's the vocalist? Actually, I've got this here. 
this is uh this is what i use live so um i used to rehearse with just having a boom mic here but yeah, it's the headset that I use, and yep. uh, I get yep. I get a lot of I get a lot of mocking comments. This is my Madonna mic, or yep. my Lady Gaga mic. <laughs> so. uh, my my buddy, uh, one of the guys that I know, uh, he he was the drummer vocalist for a band, and that's what he wears. Or it, it makes more. things a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's better than a boom stand. It's better than a boom mic. You know, that way you don't have to worry about it like moving on you or something. Just smashing the microphone stand yeah, or whatever. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Definitely your Madonna mic. Um, I've I've actually wanted one of those when I played uh, as a guitar when I was a guitarist, guitarist, mm. bassist, whatever. Um, Never got one, but um. So let's get let's get into knowing a little bit about Idol Ruin. Uh, I thought it was pretty interesting. Like, I found you, you sent me the stuff, and I listened, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, but come to find out, you guys just started. You, you guys are like just a year old. So, uh, so why don't you go ahead and tell me uh, how did you guys start? Sure, sure. Well, um. I've been playing in bands here in my hometown for uh, a number of years, uh, for the last 10 years. And um, uh, last year, my partner and I were thinking of moving to Scotland, um, but then COVID happened, borders got shut down. Um, yeah. <laughs> and around the same time, um, a lot of the bands that I was in, uh, they were winding down or breaking up or just stalling. And, um, Years prior to that, like I'd been writing songs for a uh, for a project that I was going to start for myself, you know, one day. Yeah. Um, and uh, when the the last band that I was in fell apart, and this was at the eve of COVID, actually, uh, I thought, well, to hell with it, I'll I'll, I'll start my own project. Uh, and that was how the whole drummer singer thing came along. You know, I, I I was thinking, well, I could learn bass or guitar. That might take a while. I'll stick with the instrument that I'm already familiar with and just, right. and uh, I was chatting with um, Pete, the drummer from a, a, a band uh, in, in the United States called Widow. Okay. Uh, he, he does a bit of uh, drumming and backing singing, but dude can really sing. And he was just saying, look, um, if, if you're drumming using four, four different limbs, think of vocals as just one, what's, what's one more limb while you're playing? <laughs> so I thought, well, like, it, it can't be that, it can't really be that difficult. And uh, I'd, I'd already had some experience with the drummer vocalist thing before in one of my former bands when the vocalist fucked up his voice the night before. And sorry, can you swear on your podcast? Absolutely. Don't okay. worry about it. <laughs> well, he fucked up his voice the night before. And uh, I thought, well, I'm the only other one who knows the lyrics. So I was just like, I don't know, I don't know. So that's. So, like I said, I kind of it was kind of born out of necessity, and I thought, well, well eventually, when I do move, um, I can I can take this with me and get another bass bass player, guitarist, whatever. But um, the the two guys that I that I had um, for the first lineup, I'd played with them in different bands in the past. We we played together in a grindcore act, um, and Caleb, uh, the guitarist, he uh, he's, he's still with us. He um he's been in a lot of bands in Brisbane. We had a really good chat. Turned out, you know, we like the same bands, like the same music. We'd had similar experiences with with bands, you know, just churning us. And um, we thought, well, hell, let's just get together. Let's record this this EP. These were some songs that I'd just written, like you know, years ago for that project. I was going to start one day. I thought, well, okay, today is one day. Let's get this happening. <laughs> and um. Yeah, so uh, when we had the first few rehearsals, the dynamic between the three of us um, was really good. Uh, we thought, well, okay, this is more than just a, a solo demo project. Let's take this live. Let's do let's do some something more with this. We recorded a, a music video, released the EP, and around the same time, restrictions started easing in Australia, so we were able to play some some shows this year. That's that's awesome. There's a lot of bands right now that are planned like to like 20 people uh, because mm -hmm. and, and that's that's sold out. You know, like you're playing like cafes, bars or whatever, and they're playing in front of 20 people and that's sold out. It's cool. You know, you're playing in front of people during the winter and whatnot. 
But um, oh, it's, it's summer here, man. No, no, no. I, I, I understand it's summer there, but I'm saying like <laughs> it's winter here, and when uh, when people are playing shows now, they're playing in front yeah. of the tw like 20 people. Now, when it becomes summertime and people can start playing outside, and the restrictions are a little bit looser, um, then they'll be playing in front of you know a, a few more people. So, um, next question for you: How did you come up with the name? Uh, it's okay. So it, it's kind of, it was more reflective of how, um, it was more reflective of how I was feeling at the time. <laughs> like, like most band names, it's just like, okay. Um, like a lot of the, uh, I, I was feeling stagnant, uh, and right. in my, in, in a lot of, a lot of ways, like, uh, professionally, creatively and personally. And, um, in the lyrics to one of the songs, Whip to Death, staying idle fall to ruin so that's kind of okay. how it came about and then it also ties in with our ep artwork there's this statue park in ireland there's this um statue of a of a fellow trying to crawl out of this creek it's called the ferryman and the the art piece is meant to reflect or or, or be a um uh, symbol of stagnation so like he's trying to slowly crawl out of this sinking ship in a in a creek but he's he's wasting away doing so it yeah so um that's how the name idle ruin came about was like if you basically get your shit together you'll fall to ruin <laughs> let me see if i can pull that up is that that's the one you're talking about it's a backdrop yeah yeah that's actually really cool uh, i remember when you sent me the email with that and i was just like wow that's cool. Yeah. Uh, I like that artwork. Um, so you came up with that. Uh, so we were talking a little bit, I believe it was yesterday. Uh, you mm -hmm. said that this was kind of a project that you had in mind back in like 2016, was it? Yes. Yes. And um, yeah, sorry. Go. So what was the fire that was lit under your ass to get this started? Was it just the fact that it was COVID and you were done with being, being in all these bands that were just quitting and, and whatnot? Uh, more, more or less. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, it was because of COVID. It was because of, um, uh, a few, um, local musicians, uh, without uh, mentioning any names they like there were a couple of bands that how do I say this <laughs> okay so basically I was getting a, a bit um, so you've put me on the spot here <laughs> <laughs> if you want to come back to that man, that's fine well um, that, that, that'd be a band that'd be like, hey, come join us. I'd, I'd, I'd join them and then right. we'd, we'd be playing gigs, you know, get a bit of a name for ourselves. And then, all right, let's go to the studio. Being the drummer, I'm the first cab off the rank. Start tracking. And then the band breaks up before the album is even that's, finished. That's shitty. And then next band would be like, well, come join us. Similar thing would happen. And then again and again and again. I'm just like, oh, for fuck's sake. So... Well, it's you know, yeah. uh, drummer. A good drummer is hard to find, you know, no matter where. And, and yeah. there's, and I mean this in no offense to any uh, like vocalist, bassist, or guitarist, but they're they're, they're 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 dime a dozen. And you know, I'm a guitarist. <laughs> I'm a ba I play bass. You know, I was a vocalist on a band, but finding a good drummer is just not not that easy. You know, so and, and to find a drummer who actually does vocals too, be it backup or lead vocals, that's that's pretty special. And not even just that, a good drummer. Well, I don't know if I'm any good, but I'm a drummer. Uh, I I yeah. like it. I'm not trying to kiss your ass here or anything. <laughs> but um, to answer your question of what lit what lit that fire under my ass, it was just basically like okay. All these bands are churning me. I could sit around and mope about it for days, or I can just right. get my shit together and do my own thing. And uh, I just yeah decided to take charge. And 
um, yeah, uh, we're, we're, we're doing pretty well now. And like I said, since um, we, we just had two shows with, um, with, with these guys, Shadowbrain, who are an amazing yeah. band from, from South Australia. Check them out. Yeah, I'll definitely and check them out. We've got some more shows uh, interstate. Hopefully we don't have any more um, state restrictions. And uh, yeah, our EP is um, selling really well. We've just we've just had to uh, restock our EP as well because the first run just sold out. And um, we're trying to get some distro in, in, in America at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, uh, so one of the biggest things uh, that I, I try to do is if I find a band that I like, I'll buy their stuff. And uh, the first thing I tried to do, was, I went on your band camp. I tried to buy your uh, CD, and it told me $25 for shipping. And I said, fuck that. Yeah. I, just bought the, I bought the digital. Now, I prefer having the physical copy. Like, I mm. I want the physical copy for the fact that the sheer fact that I have, like, that physical copy, you know? Yeah. But I don't know about a lot of other people. I listen to uh, my music either my phone or some type of mp3 player you know so like having the digital copy is awesome but there, there's just something about having like a cd uh the vinyl you know nowadays from what i'm hearing tape the cassettes are coming back you know like so mm -hmm. i gotta get myself a cassette player now i guess I, I, I did I had no idea that cassette uh, cassettes were coming back. I was actually talking to the one of the distributors that you you had been talking to uh, to try and get um, CDs over here, and he was telling me that man, I love CDs, I love LPs, but cassettes are the easiest things to sell. Uh, it's so weird. Mm. Yeah, I I didn't. The vinyl thing, I'm just like, yep, sweet. But the, the tape thing, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, definitely, definitely didn't see that coming. I see a lot of, like, the bigger bands. Uh, like, I'm friends with the guys in Cattle Decapitation, and mm. I see that they're always, like, pushing for their, their vinyls and stuff as well. And it's so weird. It's like everything – everything that we thought was, like, pretty much dead and we were going forward is coming back. Yeah. You know, yeah, so uh, how long before uh, Real to Real comes back? Or something? <laughs> We're going to get, uh, what is it, um, six tracks or whatever. Eight track, yeah. Eight track players, yeah, there you go. So uh, how long have you been playing? Uh, uh, drums? Uh, yeah, let's go with drums. Do you play another instrument? Oh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, I started I started with piano when I was about nine years old, but uh, okay. uh, I, you know, and I, that that kind of helped with uh, learning music theory and how to write riffs. And uh, but uh, it's funny because uh, when I draw up all our riffs on Guitar Pro and I give them to our guitarist Caleb, he he always comes back to me and he's like, Liam, I've got to change this so I can physically play it. So <laughs> <laughs> wait, so you 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 write the riffs on Guitar Pro? Yes, Dude, that's yeah. that's so cool. I, I I know that um I didn't know that a lot of bands did it, but one of the biggest bands that I found out that actually wrote their entire album on Guitar Pro was Necrophagist. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like I'm like sitting there, I'm like, I just I don't even want to learn the tablature to that. That would be crazy. And, and Muhammad's probably sitting in his house right now going, how can I write the next craziest fucking necrophagist album? You know, it's been like 13 years. But uh, to answer your question, I've been playing drums for about uh, 22 years. Okay. And uh, yeah. Um, like I said, I could have learned guitar, but I think, yeah, just that, that it, it was kind of like, just stick with what you know and learn vocals on top of that. Yeah. Being able to get all that energy out and whatnot, because you're using all four lungs. Now, and now uh, you're using five basically. Yeah. According to Pete from Widow. Yes. <laughs> I, but um, yeah. And playing, I've been playing in bands for about probably, or. Oh, 12, 12, 10, 12 years, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what are some of your influences? Uh, 
Ooh, depends on depends on the weather. Um, <laughs> Which way the wind's blowing today? Yeah. Uh, well, my biggest in influence is um, Creator. Okay. Uh, from, yeah, Creator. A lot of um, early Sepultura. All right. Um, a lot of the. Uh, so yeah, big into a lot of the German and South American uh, thrash and death metal. Uh, Dark Angel from America. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, Chalky, our hired gun bassist from last weekend. Him and I actually, we were roadies for them when they did their their uh, Australian tour two years nice. ago. So they're, they're good dudes. Uh, it was nice to give coffee to the coffee machine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the caffeine machine, sorry. And um, yeah, so a lot of the a lot of the early sort of um, uh, thrash bands that that were kind of bordering on death metal. Uh, I'll, that that sort of sweet spot in the mid '80s when 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 thrash was starting to become death metal. Um, who else? Uh, Pentagram, uh, Wishfinder General. Um, love a lot of that early doom. I'm all about the riffs, man. Like I love I love anything with a good solid riff and um, and '80s pop. I love '80s pop. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I'm not ashamed. Know, you know what? Man? I actually posted up on my uh, on my website about how I grew up on '80s pop, and then like, yeah. uh, if it wasn't for uh, Metallica's Black Album, I probably probably would have been listening to Vanilla Ice a little bit longer. So, and, and I put up there, I was like, "Don't judge me." But uh, I I try to um, make the even though it's you know extreme metal, I try to make it catchy. Right. So uh, I like having the shout back choruses. I love having the um, the fist pumps in the air, the the raised beer glasses. You know that's such such an Aussie thing. But like when when I started Idle Ruin, I wasn't thinking of what genre I was going to do. I was just thinking, all right, I want to write music that I love to hear, but also as a, not just as a musician, but also as an audience member. Right. I want to pump my fist in the air. I want to shout the chorus back. Like when I wrote Devil's Trade, all I was thinking about was. That is the perfect tempo for headbanging. <laughs> right. So you know a lot of a lot of um, that experiential and visceral aspect that you get from a lot of um, extreme metal um, is a is a big influence of mine. Okay, so now my next question for you is: so, like you said, most most bands when you start off recording and whatnot, you have uh, the drummer starts, and then you go to either or, like bass or guitar. Um, every time I've recorded, it got drums, bass, and guitars. But um, so how do you come up with your lyrical content? Like, do you, do you write the lyrics, like, say, before uh, the song is actually written? Say, like, you just jot down some things on your – and, like, a pad or whatever – and then you try to put it together with the song, or do you wait until the song is completed after like a practice, and then you're just like, hmm, and you hum like what you're gonna say? Part column A, part column B. Sometimes I'll um, have a concept uh, as I'm writing the song, or I'll, I'll be writing riffs and and I'll, I'll be looking at some of my notes, being like, okay, uh, this one can go here, yeah, cool. And then I'll flesh out the lyrics as 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 we go. But um, as for lyrical content. Um, I try to, I, I don't like writing personal lyrics. If I, if I do write something personal, I try to rewrite it so that anyone can relate to it at the same time. So it's not all just me, 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 not ragging on anyone who does that, who does write personal lyrics, but it's just, it's just not my bag. Um, the devil's trade is, is, a, is a song about a bit of local folklore. Um, there's a old building here in my hometown of Brisbane that's supposedly haunted and um it used to be the government printing uh, office and uh, apparently like there was uh, a rumor going on that if workers didn't remove their wedding rings accidents would happen to them and apparently one guy got crushed to death by his printing press so wow. that was i'm like well I, I made the mistake of reading that story at like two in the morning while home myself and and by yourself and then, and then the and then the next morning i'm like i'll i'll write a song about that as a as a but yeah um and then we've got you know uh spiritual contagion which was which is a bit more topical it's it's kind of about like uh 
the ramifications of COVID-19 and, and, you know, people believing that uh, if they pray the virus away, they'll be fine and not. Yeah. Go away, my son. Go away. <laughs> so that's, that's uh, yep, death metal band. We've got an anti-religion song. Tick. Yep, cool. Moving on. <laughs> Right, you know, you have to have that anti-religious song. You know, mm. you got the, the gods of glass, uh, whipped to death, spiritual contagion, and the devil's trade. Now, that's part of your uh, your EP that you have available on Bandcamp. Do you have that available anywhere else? Yep, Spotify. We also, like we said earlier, we have it on physical. But um, if any European listeners are, are on here, we have it available through uh, Dying Victims Promotions, uh, Dying Victims Productions in Germany, and um, uh, Goat Lord, Goat Lord, uh, Goat March, sorry, Goat March, sorry, Scum Lord and Goat Lord, I'm getting them all mixed up, Goat March Distro in Greece, and um, any Japanese viewers, um, Rockstack Records in Japan, so... That's actually really cool that you get all of that stuff in, in a matter of a year. Uh, so how long did it take for you guys to like write your songs, get into the recording studio, record those, and then get like get as tight as you are? Um, well, some of the songs had already been written. Um, like Devil's Trade, I'd written all the way back in... I'd had an early draft of that back in 2009. And then um, we... Uh, my old band Malachite, we 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 had a crack at it, and then that was a rejected song. So I, I, I so that I that already had a few uh, years clocked up on it, but um, yeah, most of the songs had already been written, and then I think Spiritual Contagion was was uh, that was that was the new one that I'd written for the when I started the band. So it took us about three months to because originally this was just going to be a demo, and then right. I was going to. But, um, yeah, it took us about a week to record it all. Well, that's that, that's cool. I know that sometimes recording can be a pain in the balls. Uh, I know the past couple times that I've recorded, it's – there's different parts that are played by different people because you can't hear it during practice and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But luckily enough for you, you have uh, the ability of writing – uh, on Guitar Pro, how long did it take for you to get get good at Guitar Pro? I'm still not good. <laughs> I still got I still got Caleb uh, retranslating riffs for me, but I'm getting there. But can you translate the drums to it? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. okay. So 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 when you do that, me I. I I only know talent, Jerry. I can't read music for shit. So, are you writing it as its actual music notes or tabs? Yeah, I'm, 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 I try to go for what sounds like. I'll do the whole mouth riff thing while I'll, I'll sing the riff into my phone or whatever, and then I'm like, okay, how does that sound? And then try to tab it out and then give it to Caleb. Be like, hey man, what do you think? And yeah. And how long? How long does it actually take you to uh, get all that? tabbed out like I, if you're not like what is it uh proficient or fluent with it or whatever it's got to take you a while it can take anyway like i've had songs like one of the new songs that we wrote which will be on the next recording took about two hours to write uh and then there there are some some songs that can take like up to several weeks like i'll, I'll have a, a framework for it come back to be like no nah, i don't like that and then change it up a bit and so, oh. so, so do you write specifically on Guitar Pro? Mostly, or, yeah. do you, or so you guys don't get together and just like start. Oh, yeah, talking. we do. We, well, and yeah, well, we're starting to get more more of that now. Um, there is starting to become more of a band dynamic between us. With for the for the album that we're going to start writing, you know, we're there's going to be more collaborative effort and things like that. Right. Yeah. So that was actually going to be one of my next questions is, is uh, can we expect a full length uh, in the future? So uh, you, you've answered that. Do you have other songs that are completed right now outside of, the, uh, outside of the four that are on your EP? We do, yeah. And um, we hope to go back into the studio um, later this year and uh, get them down. 
Right. You guys actually just finished recording that not too long ago. That, uh, or you released it, I should say, uh, not too long ago. It says here released on December third, twenty twenty. So that's pretty cool. And uh, I just noticed. I didn't. I didn't notice this before, but I just noticed that your bassist and your guitarist are both backing vocals. Uh, so that's pretty. That's pretty cool. You guys are all doing the, doing the vocals together. Yeah, uh, and I don't know if I'm supposed to say this or not, but I know that you said that you were, uh, you guys were in the midst of uh, a bassist. Yes, and um, yeah, uh, anyone who wants to read that on our page can. But uh, we had a hired gun for the last weekend, Chalky Hill, who is a drummer. Actually, he's a drummer who plays bass. He's a multi instruments instrumentalist. He plays for a band called Odious. You should get them on. They're very good. Um, and then we'll be, annou- we'll be announcing our uh, new basses pretty soon. So so you guys had uh, had something. Pu- now, is this on your uh, Facebook that you were talking about? or Okay. So what other social media platforms are you on? You're on Facebook. Uh, do you guys have Twitter, Instagram? Um- Instagram, yeah. You'll probably find more activity uh, on Instagram. I think generally – we find a lot more engagement on there. Um, really? But yeah, we're on face, we're on Facebook, Bandcamp, Instagram. We've got a YouTube page as well, but, and I, I, I I've, I've tried Twitter before and I just gave up. Like there's no, no engagement on there. <laughs> you know, Twitter has actually been one of my, my newest things. Uh, yeah. I started, started using it. I want to say more frequently just about a year ago. And I, I'm now just getting the hang of it. Mm. Um, most of, most of my content is off of Twitter. I try not to use my own personal Facebook, um, for, um, for the show. So it's Twitter, YouTube, and that's basically it. Like I'll promote it on my page, but I don't want people going on my page, adding me, you know, stuff like that. So, uh, what are some of the, some of your bands that are in Australia that you think everybody who is listening, watching, you know, if they're not in Australia, should check out. Oh man, how long you got? Hey man, you can throw a heap shit ton of full whatever you want, man. Uh, you know damn well I'm gonna have you send me a list of bands that I should check out from Australia. Well, first of all, Shatterbrain. Okay. Amazing. They're from uh, Adelaide, which is uh, a southern city of Australia. Um, yeah, Shatterbrain, Hidden Intent. Um, Check out their uh, film clip for uh, Pub Feed, which you're going to see a lot of uh, uh, Aussie metalers. It's just like a yeah treasure trove of, of Australian metalheads just all doing. Uh, it was a it was a lockdown parody video, so we're all singing about how much we miss going to the pub for for dinner. In- <laughs> you got to check it out if, if if you if you love Aussie humor, you'll love that that that, that video. I'll t- I'll take um, a look at it. Uh, in Malice's Wake are another really good band uh, from Melbourne. Um, um, you've probably heard of Harlot, thrash metal band from from Australia. Sounds familiar. Uh, Bastardizer from Sydney. They're a really good sort of black and thrash rock and roll band. Okay. Really, really awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, Odious. Odious, our, uh, our like we had Chalky on bass. Okay. Last weekend, that's the band he's drumming for. They're about to drop a uh, an, an EP in April. All right. Uh who else? Desecrator from Melbourne. Um, and some of the classics, uh, Mortal Sin from Sydney, uh, Slaughter Lord, who, you know, one of the earliest death metal bands and they were from Australia. Uh, Armored Angel, who we mentioned earlier, Hobbs Angel of Death. Um, yeah. Um, we have so many great bands here in Australia. I Actually, Chalky and I, we actually produced a, um, a web series a couple of years ago all about Australian thrash metal called um, Thrash or Fuck Off. It's on YouTube, so please go check it out. Yeah, I'll definitely – Thrash or Fuck Off, huh? Is it thrash, thrash or Fuck Off or Thrash or Go Fuck Off? Thrash or Fuck Off. Let me see if I can find this. Yeah. Yeah. You, you guys – wow. You guys had – now this was your thing? Yes, yes. Yeah, you guys had quite a following too. 
about 500, uh, almost 600 people on there. Uh, so um, you said that we can expect something hopefully by the end of the year, um, like a full length. Uh, we're, we're doing another um, short EP, so um, we're, we're hopefully doing a split with someone. Um, we can't we can't mention any names yet, but uh, not a problem. That's uh, that's the uh, aim. That's the goal. That's the goal. So uh, you know how how is it right now um, in Australia? Because I know where I am. The restrictions for playing shows and whatnot uh, aren't that loose. Are you guys having like fans show up to the shows? And are you guys playing inside or are you playing outside? We're playing uh, inside, um, and it depends on which state of Australia you go to. Um, in, I think I think the Shadow Boys were saying that in Adelaide they're still sitting down, they're still having sit down shows. Uh, I don't know if they're doing that in the states, but um, in Sydney they they I think they're just coming out of the the this current phase of lockdown where people can stand up and mosh. Uh, in Brisbane we can dance, mosh, do whatever we want, but I think the capacity is still limited on the size of the venue. So the venue we played on Saturday night was limited to 50, but it was such a tiny little venue that we were going that's, ape shit. Oh, yeah, the, the vibe was good anyway. So Right. Yeah, that that's cool. I mean, you know, you can have like 20 to 30 people at the show, but if it's like a small place and, you, you know, you're feeling the vibe and whatnot, that makes you want to do, you know, go so much harder. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm glad things are starting to clear up there and you guys are being able to play shows. I've had a couple bands on um, lately. Um, one band from Sweden. Um, they're not even allowed to like do anything. Another band from the UK, they're locked down completely unless they're going to work. Um, one of the guys in the band, he literally hasn't like left his house unless he goes for a walk or goes to the store and it's just I was telling I was telling him I was like dude if I wasn't working this entire time I'd be I'd be going fucking crazy oh yeah but um I think I think we've been pretty fortunate Australia being such an isolated island continent we've 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 really taken advantage of that but I do feel for all the other regions of the world like you know when I've whenever I post a, a, a photo of us going hard at a live show I'm just like ah oh I feel so bad for you but I'm still gonna post this <laughs> yeah fuck yeah <laughs> but um give it time hopefully you guys pick up pretty soon because uh we'd love to come and play over dude, there or even Europe and yeah there there are so many great bands that I have I've found um not just through like Twitter um, through Bandcamp, like, mm -hmm. and and now, I found you guys basically through Facebook. So it was, it, it's a, it's a great, uh, the social media aspect of all of this is really good, and hopefully, like in the future, you know, I get to actually meet you guys. Um, so I would love to meet you guys. I'd love to see you guys. You guys are fucking awesome. I love listening to your shit. Thank you. And I appreciate you so much coming on. And um, we're actually going to watch your video um, for the song, The Devil's Trade. Uh, and now before uh, we go ahead and listen to this, go ahead, shoot a plug, let everybody know exactly where they can find your stuff. I know you already said it once, but you can't plug enough. Sure. Um, well, Idol Ruin, find us on Facebook, Instagram. Um, shoot us a message. Come say hi or g'day. Um, yeah, we're, we're a very approachable people. We're not fucking rock stars. So just, just come say g'day to us online. We'll, we'll talk back. Um, find us on YouTube uh, and Bandcamp, of course. I also want to give a shout out to uh, Pagan and Paler and to the dogs. Uh, hey, guys. How you doing? And uh, good evening. Your top, your part of the world, so yeah, it's actually six forty my time. It's what what time? It, it's six forty Monday, the March fifteenth. What time is it there? Eight forty a.m. on the sixteenth. So yeah, you're in the future. Greetings from the future. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and listen to. Uh, we're gonna watch this video for the song "The Devil's Trade" by yep. Idol Runes. <laughs> 